Well, quite a different story here in the desert this holiday weekend. A lot of people are spending time outside, lounging by the pool or the lake, and just grilling out. So as we plunge towards summer, the type of sunscreen you use is very important, especially with the new FDA labeling requirements. So Dr. Jerry Lucas is with Arizona Oncology, and he's here with what you need to know. Okay, so the FDA is no longer allowing labels that claim waterproof or sweatproof because it's misleading. Why is that? Well, it's misleading because basically it's a false statement. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no product that will not degrade, wear off, wash off over time with exposure to water through swimming or with sweating through uh, sports activities. Mm -hmm. So what exactly should we be looking for when shopping around for sunscreen? Well, what you want to look for is something with an SPF or sun protection factor of 15 or greater okay. and broad spectrum coverage. But basically, Everything now you will see is UVA, UVB, broad spectrum mm -hmm. protection. You know, there's some folks out there, some experts who think, okay, anything over 50 is a gimmick. In fact, one out of seven dermatologists I was reading, um, or actually one out of seven products claim that an SPF rating of 50 or higher is actually not really the case. So do you think it's a gimmick? Do you think that we shouldn't be buying things right. that are over 50? Right, it is a gimmick because basically an SPF of 15 will provide you about 94% protection from the sun. Mm -hmm. So all you can gain is 6%. If you go to 30, you're doubling your protection, taking it to 97. If you go to 50, maybe you're getting 98.5%. So really anything above 30, you really don't gain the extra protection because you have to reapply this every two hours anyway. They wash off, wear off, they don't last all day long. And a lot of people forget to do that. That's very key. So how often should you be reapplying? Yeah, you need to reapply the sunscreen every two hours. Now, now again, if you're swimming or something like that, and I'll say something about the new labeling also, is that uh, they don't allow sweatproof and waterproof anymore on the labeling, but they do allow sweat resistant, water resistant. Oh. And you'll start to see two categories of resistance, uh, either 40 or 80 minutes the FDA allows. So it gives you an indication with those products, you know, when you, if you swim for half an hour, right. you probably need to reapply in either case, but for sure if you're using like a 40 minute protection. Okay, and when it comes to children, you said, you know, we should be wearing SPF 15 or higher, but children, do they need a higher SPF? Well, children, six months or less, obviously, no sun. Uh -huh. You don't really need sunblock because they shouldn't be out in the sun. But above that, uh, 30 to 50 would be the range and usually products that are provide more of a barrier the zinc oxide products mm. are probably better they're probably less irritating to the eyes potentially okay and finally on Friday we showed our folks at home a consumer report story that ranked two generic brand sunscreen surprisingly as some of the best there was targets up and up spray and Walmart's equate lotion um, I'm wondering what are your favorites what well, do you think is up there I like the Neutrogena products, and, and the, personally, I use this one, um, Elta, mm -hmm. and it's a very, it's a zinc oxide-based product, okay. and you would think that they go on and they're white, but with the nanotechnology nowadays, these particles are so small, you put them on and they're clear, and they absorb quickly, and they're not greasy, so that's a favorite one of mine to use on your face. All right, Dr. Jerry Lucas, we thank you so much for thank your you. insight.